Hi, Arishipo, Arishipo.com. Ruth, well, we just said hi to the introduction of the other video about these lenses from uh, Maker by Maker, uh, 25 and 65 millimeter cine lens. But we're going to also to use this Maker lens, an 85 millimeter, 1.4 full frame. And we're going to test it, make a photo shoot as we hear, okay? So we'll speak about the lens. So let's start. So here's the beast. As you can see, this is massive. I'll take, up, uh, take out the uh, sun hood to give you an idea of the size. This is on uh, the Alpha 7 Mark II, but it also exists for uh, Nikon Z mount and also Lumix L, uh, Sigma and Leica. This lens is simply incredible. One thing, the type of picture I'm going to show you uh, is not my style. Normally I don't like such a shallow depth of field, but most people who buy this type of lens are searching uh, for this type of uh, bokeh uh, of uh, really shallow depth of field, which is not exactly the same thing, okay? Uh, so uh, it was logical for me to test it this way to be able to give my impression uh, when used this way, okay? Uh, Yes, because normally uh, you don't get a, a, a lens that size, that big, that weight, if you don't actually going to use it at maximum aperture or close to the maximum aperture, because if you don't use 1.4 or 2.0, you could have a lot smaller lens, obviously. But uh, it's stunning. This lens is incredible. So I will show you a picture and I will also uh, show you the chart. So I've got the scientific side of it to give you my impression, the technical side, why, if it's sharp, not sharp, and everything, okay? So let's carry on. So 85 millimeter full frame, the build is beautiful. It sounds like plastic, but still, I don't know what kind of plastic it is, but it's really nice. Here you have the focusing ring in case you want to manually focus. Here you have a switch, you have manual focusing and uh, auto, uh, auto focus. Here you have the aperture ring. The clicks are really nice in thirds. And you have also the A, so in case you want to uh, have uh, speed priority, shutter speed priority, you put on A, or if you want to manage uh, the aperture from uh, one of your wheels, you can do it also. If you take it out here, see the build, uh, really nice. You have the red seal here, and here you have also a USB-C connector, so you can update the firmware. Yeah, the lens is massive, the lens is so big, but honestly, in hand, it feels really nice. By the way, I don't know if I said it here, you have a, a function button, you can uh, set uh, the way you want. So uh, in hand, it's really stable, really nice. So for me, the build is a 10. Really, really nice, really great, okay? So 85 millimeter full frame, obviously you can put it on an APS-C camera. 13 elements in A groups, so there's a lot of glass in there that explains the size uh, and the weight. The iris of the aperture has 12 blades, and you see it uh, when you look at the bokeh, the out of focus part is so creamy, this is incredible, really soft transition, incredible, really nice. Aperture from 1.4 to f16 plus uh, A mode. The minimum focusing distance, well, I've got a problem with that because on the box, it says 98 centimeters. On the website, it says 98 and 63 centimeters, depends on where you look at. Actually, my experience, it's about yeah, 98 centimeters, about a meter. That means you're going to be able to frame more or less like this, okay? Uh, with roots, by the hat and this, maybe a bit closer but around that. I would have liked to have a bit shorter minimum focusing distance to be able maybe to get just the eye or something like this, but well. The filter size is 77 millimeter. And well, basically, if we look at the physical part of this, that's it. Now we're going to speak about the results because this is what we're here for now to, to have a look at what you can get with this uh, lens. Really important, uh, when you're going to use a lens like this, 85 millimeter full frame at uh, 1.4, if you uh, are really close, like one meter, you will get uh, one eye in focus and the other one will not be in focus because the depth of field is so shallow that you cannot get both in focus except if the person is really facing you and uh, the, the both eyes are in the same plane. Otherwise, that's a problem. So uh, it's important you realize that because many people, they get home and then they see on the larger screen and say, oh, I just have one eye in focus. Okay, so you have two options. One is to get the person really facing the camera, to have uh, both eyes on the same plane, or uh, to uh, close down the aperture to 2.8 or f4, and then gain a bit of depth of field. Okay, so uh, 
for some people it's a big mistake to have uh, an eye in focus the other one is not uh, and for other people uh, they just love it what's important is that is that you make the decision that gets you to the result you want okay it's not one thing is wrong one thing is good it's a matter of taste personal taste okay speaking about depth of field uh, honestly i prefer 2.8 or f4 but it's a matter of personal taste uh, at 2.8 you normally get both eye in focus but you will not distinguish exactly what's in the background you will see a bit better but not in detail if you want to uh, guess not see perfectly but guess a bit more what's in the background then you should go to f4 it's true that i said that uh, why should you buy a lens that opens at 1.4 so if you actually you're going to use it at f4 2.8 well actually the fact that there are 12 blades in the iris makes the background really uh, soft really creamy so although you use it at 2.8 or f4 maybe you're interested in getting this result so that would justify getting this lens anyway even if you don't use it at 1.4 but personally i prefer 2.8 or uh, f4 uh, for my own uh, taste okay but it's down to you i will show you on the chart the results are great from a uh, full aperture anyway there's always a big difference between theory and uh, reality when we speak about uh, charts to uh, test lenses but in this case what i found on the chart is exactly what i get in reality in yeah the quality is just simply stunning so i'll show you from full aperture up to uh, f16 so you have an idea of what that lens can do so let's see 1.4 i've got the sun hood on and i don't see a vignetting really maybe slightly okay no distortion let's check the center center is really really good it's not bad at all okay border border is not bad either it's not as it's a bit softer obviously corner is a bit softer also okay let's check at 2.0 center is really good maybe there's a bit of uh, chromatic aberration uh, border is really good too corner still a bit soft but pff, really good eh? really good 2.0 center is uh, really good border a bit there is a bit of chromatic aberration okay and the corners are really really good f 5.6 center now we speak about it's perfect corner yeah the same really really good okay f8 center is still good I, st I still think there's a bit of chromatic aberration on the lens okay corner really good bit of uh, border, border we do see uh, some chromatic aberration here okay and here that's not bad at all okay corner let's check uh oh, that was 5.6 okay all right and now f8 okay f8 uh that's really good border really good chromatic aberration yes there is and uh same thing for the corners f11 we yeah we, we see that uh, the uh, diffraction is entering a bit a bit uh, loss of uh, sharpness maybe in the corner also we said borders okay let's check the f16 i don't know why there's a lot more light but still uh, i uh, exposed in third so it should be right okay so it's clearly more light on f16 okay uh center we do see diffraction you know is eating the sharpness okay same thing the corner and the border really this lens is really really okay uh when you still see at 1.4 uh up to f8 is really 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 nice uh if f11 is even usable really a good lens so as you can see the results are stunning uh, obviously a lens like this if you uh, use it for portrait at full aperture uh, even if it's really sharp in the border you will not see it because it is in the uh, out of focus part of your picture but if you wanted to use a lens like this to do like uh, yeah uh, painting reproduction for example yes you could use it uh, yeah 2.8 f4 uh, the sharpness is really really good so you could use that for that uh, also so yeah uh, for me this lens is incredible one thing if you feel you're going to go uh, walking around with this lens just happily spending the day forget it because it's really heavy so uh, you will come back with scoliosis like this 
But uh, this kind of lens is a thought, I think, for a plan photo shoot, uh, whether it's product photography or uh, portrait photography. And then you can really enjoy it. You plan, you know how you're going to do it, uh, to use it and who with all this. So, so this is great. But as a portrait lens, I love it. Why? Because although I'm not a fan of extreme uh, shallow depth of field, I must say that even in this situation, the sharp part, the, the, the part that is really uh, in focus is so sharp. That's really good. So it means you can uh, focus on the eye, have them really sharp, and then you have everything that falls really, uh, yeah, transition to uh, the full uh, out of focus is so nice. So uh, honestly, I prefer to use it at 2.8, but it's a matter of personal taste. But even if you want to use it at 1.4, where it is in focus, it will be sharp. So really, really nice. If we speak about the autofocus, I had no problem focusing, even if uh, I had backlit, it was fine. I read some people complaining that uh, the autofocus was not too good until they got a uh, a firmer grade so I don't know if I got the latest firmware I think so and I had absolutely no problem how does it compare to uh, this uh, it's equivalent in Nikon or uh, Sony or Lumix I don't know I didn't try them but for me the result on this one for that price is so good so uh, I'm not even tempted to try them okay maybe they're better maybe they're something that I don't know about okay but so far I think this lens is completely recommendable the results are uh, just stunning so yeah I can only recommend it so if you're interested in this lens I'll leave you a link in the description where you can buy it so thank you so much Root for pausing don't forget I've got another video it's not published yet uh, with the cine lenses we tested uh, that day and uh, yeah, thank you to her for posing. Always really professional. I really uh, like to the picture with her. She knows exactly uh, what I'm searching for because I don't have to think about poses. She knows all of them. So this is fantastic. So thank you to her. Thank you to Makey for uh, sending me the lens. Thank you to you for watching the video. If you feel it may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done it yet, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. The small button down here and a small bell. If you click on the bell, you will get notified when I upload a new video. My website, arishipo.com. If you have any question, can leave a comment below. I'll also leave you links of my on Amazon, links of everything I reviewed by Kev Concepts and Mark Flashes by Westcott, more affiliated links and also a link to my PayPal account in case you want to make a donation. Thank you very much. Please take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.